टासल बोन्स आर वेरी बिग एंड प्रोमिनेंट एंड फॉर्म फोर्टी परसेंट ऑफ द एरिया ऑफ द फुट इन कंट्रास्ट द पुअर फेलेंजीज हैव बीन रिड्यूस्ड टू एन इनसिग्निफिकेंट स्टेटस टासल्स आर सेवन इन नंबर फाइव ऑफ देम स्टार्ट विद द लेटर सी वन विथ टी टेलस and one with n the navicular the largest is the calcaneus it forms the heel of the foot next smaller is the cuboid with a groove for the tendon of peroneus longus next smaller is the medial cuneiform medial cuneiform bone for attachment of tibialis anterior and peroneus longus next smaller is the lateral cuneiform for articulation with the cuboid the smallest c bone is the intermediate cuneiform lying between medial and lateral cuneiform bones t 6 is the talus very significant bone with numerous ligamentous attachments no muscle is attached to talus it is only joining the various bones of the foot and leg n is the seventh navicular bone into which major part of important tibialis posterior is inserted brief description of the tarsal bones is as under talus talus is an important tarsal bone it forms the ankle joint it also forms the sub talus joint between the talus and the calcaneum and anteriorly it forms talo calcaneo navicular joint the head of the talus forms the talo calcaneo navicular joint neck is directed downwards forwards and medially the head of talus forms the talo navicular joint inferior surface of head shows an antero lateral facet for anterior facet of calcaneum a middle facet for the middle facet of calcaneum which is on the sustentaculum talli the neck neck is directed downwards forwards and medially the dorsal surface of neck the dorsal surface of neck gives attachment to capsular ligament of the ankle joint and dorsal talo navicular ligament and the lateral surface of neck gives attachment to anterior talo fibular ligament the plantar surface of the neck has a groove which is known as sulcus talli this sulcus talli joins with the sulcus calcaneus to form sinus tarsi attached to the sinus tarsi is interosseous talo calcanean ligament and the cervical ligament the body of talus the superior surface or trochlear surface of body of talus articulates with the lower end of tibia this trochlear surface of talus is wider anteriorly 
and narrow posterior very good the same is the case with tibia the tibia surface is also wider anteriorly and narrow posterior this has an important bearing on people wearing high heels while one wears high heels the narrow posterior border of talus comes in contact with wider anterior border of tibia this is a loose fitting and dislocation occurs the inferior surface of body of talus bears the cal posterior calcanean facet pencil for the pencil and forms the subtalar joint the medial surface medial surface of talus is comma shaped in the upper part and it articulates with the medial malleolus the lower pitted part gives attachment to deep fibers of the important deltoid ligament the lateral surface of body of talus articulates with the lateral malleolus the talus and calcaneum are held in position the posterior surface or posterior process shows a medial tubercle a large lateral tubercle and the groove in between the two has the tendon of flexor hallucis longus attachments the posterior process gives attachment to posterior talofibular ligament posterior talocalcanean ligament on the plantar surface medial tubercle gives attachment to superficial part of deltoid ligament and medial talocalcanean ligament the lateral tubercle is large and it may be a separate bone then it is known as os trigonum the calcaneus or calcaneum it is the largest tarsal bone forming the heel it is cuboidal in shape it shows posterior surface anterior surface so superior surface inferior surface which is rough medial concave surface and a lateral a rough surface the posterior surface upper area of posterior surface is covered by a bursa in the middle area there is the insertion of very strong and important tendocalcaneus tendon and plantaris muscle is attached medial to the tendocalcaneus in the lower part is the fatty tissue and it bears the weight of the body anterior surface is concave or convex for articulation with the cuboid bone the dorsal surface shows many parts posterior one third is rough for the fat posterior part yeah middle one third has the posterior facet for the talus and the facet is lying on the body of the talus it is followed by sulcus calcaneal for the interosseous talocalcanean and cervical ligament it also gives attachment to extensor digitorum brevis 
bifurcate ligament and stem of inferior extensor retinaculum. Then there is the middle facet for the talus and anterior facet for the talus. These are present on the head of the talus and we can see them articulating with each other. The plantar surface is rough. It shows medial and lateral tubercles posteriorly and anterior tubercle anteriorly. The long plantar ligament is attached between these three tubercles. Attachments on medial tubercle. There is plantar aponeurosis, flexor retinaculum, abductor hallucis muscle, lateral to it is flexor digitorum brevis and attached on the lateral tubercle is abductor digiti minimi. The area in front of anterior tubercle and the anterior tubercle itself gives attachment to a short plantar ligament. The lateral surface, it is flat, it shows a peroneal trochlea in its anterior part for attachment of peroneal retinaculum. The groove above the trochlea lodges tendon of peroneus brevis and groove below it lodges the tendon of peroneus longus. The calcaneofibular ligament is attached behind the peroneal trochlea. From the lowest part of lateral surface near the plantar border is the attachment of lateral head of flexor digitorum accessorius muscle. Okay. The medial surface is concave and gives attachment to the fleshy fibers of flexor digitorum accessorius muscle. It also has a shelf-like projection, the sustentaculum talus, on which the talus rests. The lower surface of sustentaculum talus is grooved by the tendon of flexor hallucis longus. Its medial margin is related to spring ligament, which is very important slip of tibialis posterior, superficial fibers of deltoid and the medial talocalcanean ligament. The navicular bone, it is boat shaped, lies between the proximal tarsal bones that is talus and calcaneum and distal tarsal bones that is three cuneiforms and the cuboid. The anterior surface of navicular is convex and divided into three facets for the three cuneiform bones. The posterior surface is concave for articulation with the rounded head of talus. The plantar surface of rough and non-articular, it gives attachment to a very important spring ligament or plantar calcaneo navicular ligament. The dorsal surface is rough and gives attachment to ligaments like telonavicular, cuneonavicular and cubonavicular. The medial surface contains a tuberosity on its plantar side. The tuberosity is separated from the plantar surface by a groove. The tuberosity gets principal insertion of tibialis posterior muscle. The groove transmits a part of the muscle to other tarsal bones except talus. It also gives slips to middle three metatarsal bones. So tibialis posterior is inserted into nine bones of the foot. The lateral surface is rough and irregular and has a facet for cuboid. The calcaneo-navicular part of the bifurcate ligament 
is attached to the lateral surface. Hmm. The cuneiform bones, these are three cuneiform bones, medial, intermediate and lateral. The medial is the largest and intermediate is the smallest and lateral is in between. The edge of wedge in the medial cuneiform bone is on the dorsal aspect, whereas the edge of wedge is planter in the intermediate and lateral cuneiform bones. Medial cuneiform. It articulates proximally with the navicular and distally with the base of first metatarsal bone. Tibialis anterior is mostly inserted into antero-inferior angle of medial surface and partly into the base of first metatarsal. Small part of peroneus longus is inserted into antero-inferior part of lateral surface of medial cuneiform and greater part is inserted into base of first metatarsal bone. Plantar surface also gets a slip of tibialis posterior. Intermediate cuneiform. It is the smallest cuneiform it articulates with the navicular proximally and base of second metatarsal distally. It receives a slip of tibialis posterior. Lateral cuneiform. It articulates with the navicular proximally and base of third metatarsal distally. The lateral surface articulates with the cuboid. It also receives a slip of tibialis posterior tendon. The cuboid, it articulates with the anterior surface of calcaneum to form the calcaneo-cuboid joint and anteriorly it articulates with the bases of fourth and fifth metatarsal bones. Its lateral surface shows a notch which continues as a groove on the plantar surface. It gives passage to an important tendon of peroneus longus muscle. The long plantar ligament from the big area on plantar surface of calcaneum converts the groove into a tunnel for the safe passage of peroneus longus tendon. The short plantar ligament is attached to the posterior border of plantar surface. Hmm. 